hey, Motormaid here, and it's the end of the year, and I said, what I should do is, since I've got over 1,200 videos on YouTube, I'm going to let you pick the best of the best videos of the past year, and I'm going to show you excerpts from those videos. I'll also put a link below so you can watch the entire video, because I know you're going to like these. Maybe you missed them, maybe you didn't, maybe you'd like to see them twice. So, this video is going to show you all the videos I've done the last... I guess about 12 months or so that you think are the best and I know you think they're the best because they got the most amount of views some of them a million and a half views and before I go and you watch these videos I want to show you this this is the end of the year special you get my ride like a pro experience video or any of my DVDs and we're gonna throw in another video on high speeds absolutely free don't have to call to get this if you go on the website and order we're just going to send you the extra one any of the dvds that you purchase you're going to get this one free so come on let's watch these videos hey motorman here and this week i had two riders one of which this rider you see right here who just joined a drill team and he said he had two things that he was having a problem with he wanted to get the bike as low as possible he wanted to really be scraping those boards and he said he tended to use too much rear brake when he made really tight turns. So those are the two things he wanted me to get him over. I succeeded in that. And we have another rider who had a high fear level. And that's this rider right here that you're seeing right now. He's on a Road King Special, which has a lower shock in the back. It does limit the lean angle quite a bit, but that's not a problem for him. His problem is the fear of leaning the motorcycle. He's been to the class twice before on different motorcycles, yeah, but the fear really is, is the same on all of them. He understands that, he realizes he has that fear, and that's why he's come to the class a couple of times because he wants to get over that fear, and we're gonna get him over it little by little. He improves each time he comes to the class. So I'm gonna show you the good and the bad and the ugly in this video. You're this far, this far from, from scraping those boards. So as luck would have it, this past weekend I happened to have two gold wings in the class. These are pre-2018 models, and these gold wings weigh uh, 940 pounds according to the specs. By the way, the newer ones are about 850 or so, still very heavy. Uh, of course, both of these have a clutch on them, and we've got one rider, the one you see right here, who rides up in the mountains, has ridden hundreds of thousands of miles, but has never practiced low-speed handling. We've got another rider on a yellow gold wing, you're going to see him in just a moment, who has practiced. He's ridden a lot of miles, but he has practiced his low speed handling, and it shows because he was pretty good, especially when I consider for gold wing riders. And I'm not saying anything bad about gold wing riders, I'm just saying if you don't practice on these bikes, as, as I said, low speed handling is quite difficult. This rider did a good job, had a couple of drops, but he he knew what he was doing and knew what the techniques were and he just needed me to refine those techniques for him the number one most difficult heavyweight motorcycle to control at low speeds has got to be the honda gullwing with the dct transmission on a bike like this without a clutch you have to find that sweet spot between just enough throttle and just enough rear brake pressure and that's not easy the fact that also the motorcycle weighs 900 pounds doesn't help things. It can be done. That rider practiced quite a bit. And here's number three most difficult motorcycles to handle at low speeds. And that's the BMW 1600s with the six-cylinder motorcycle. And the reason it's so difficult to handle at low speeds is actually two things. The throttle is extremely sensitive. It's got a very light flywheel, just like the Gold Wings. And the brake, the rear brake, is very sensitive. Finding that sweet spot between just enough brake pressure and just enough throttle while in the friction zone, it takes some time. This rider practiced prior to coming to the class, and I'm glad he did. Hey, Motorman here. And today we're going to talk about why you drop your motorcycle. I'm going to show you a bunch of drops. These happened at my class. They happen all the time. Usually if we have 10 riders, it's one out of 10 drops their motorcycle, sometimes two out of 10. But it's almost always for the same reason. But we're gonna go over these drops and we're gonna diagnose every one of them and see exactly what happened so that should you make the same mistake, you'll know exactly why it happened or you'll be able to avoid this mistake. We're gonna start with what I believe to be the easiest motorcycle to learn the proper low speed techniques on. Harley-Davidson Road King and you could pick just about any year 
photo there was of a 2021. Here I'm riding my 2019 Police Road King. It's the same as the civilian version, except it comes with the 114 motor instead of the 107. This bike is practically a dream come true on this course because it's got a 32 degree lean angle. That's very good for a heavyweight cruiser. It's got a 64 inch wheelbase and a 26 degree rake. They will turn in about, I think I've got them down as low as 15 feet or so, maybe even a little bit less than 15 feet if you're right on the frame. Of course, you gotta know the proper techniques to allow the motorcycle to handle like this, but that's what we're talking about here. If you wanna learn the proper techniques, why pick a bike that's very difficult? So I'm looking at only the green cones. That means my head is turning the entire time. I never look at the other cones. I look just at the green. As soon as I get close to this green one, I look at the next one, then the next one. I'm probably eight feet, 10, 10 feet from the cone before I turn my head and look for the next one, but my head is turned the entire time. Speed right now is eight miles an hour. Circle this big, which is probably around 32 feet. I can get up pretty fast, but I'm in the friction zone. A little pressure on the rear brake. And I got my head and eyes turned the entire time. It's important to do this in both directions. Now today we're gonna to talk about, this subject is, confuses so many people. We're gonna talk about handlebar steering versus counter steering or push steering. Uh, as, as a slight example here, let me show you this. This is handlebar steering, when I'm turning the handlebars in the direction I wanna go. And push steering, that occurs above about 15 miles per hour. If you push forward on the left grip, the bike will lean left and go left. Push forward on the right grip, it leans right and goes right. Anything above about 15 miles per hour, the only way to make the motorcycle turn is by counter steering or push steering. Now, I've heard people say, well, I push down on the bars. Believe me, I don't care how fast you're going, but pushing down does absolutely nothing. You cannot turn the motorcycle by pushing down on the bars. At speed, you're either pushing forward or you're pulling back, but let's not confuse this. And I know there's some physics physicists out there who are gonna tell me that you're always counter steering. Forget that, think of it, two things. Things. Either your handlebar steering, which is at low speeds, or your push steering, which causes the motorcycle to lean. I believe in keeping it simple, stupid. Kiss principle. Right now I'm going about 10 miles an hour, and I am handlebar steering. I'm turning the handlebars in the direction I want to go. I'll make a U-turn. You'll see the handlebars. I'm going to try to keep my eyes on the handlebars as I do this, but... That's handlebar steering. We're gonna come up to some turns here. This first one, the road goes to the left. So I'm gonna push forward slightly on the left grip. The bike leans left and goes left. Now it's going to go to the right. I'm gonna push forward on the right grip. The bike leans right and goes right. The handlebars don't actually turn. Here's a left, push forward. The bike, it forces the bike into a lean. And that is the only way to make a motorcycle turn at higher speeds. Now, Tim, who would you recommend performs an exercise like this? It would have to be highly skilled riders only. I mean, big men, no women. Women can't do this. So make sure it's someone who knows what they're doing. Okay, you heard that, Marianne. So, yeah, she's gonna get on a bike and take a little ride. I'm sure she's not even gonna attempt to do this figure eight because you know, she's a girl. It, it, girls don't do this stuff. All right, what Tim was saying, he wasn't trying to insult women, but you know, it, women are smaller than men. They, they don't have the strength that it takes to ride an 850 pound motorcycle. Sure, you could cruise on down the road, but ladies, you think you're gonna be able to make motor officer type maneuvers on a 900 pound motorcycle and you weigh 110 pounds? It's gonna be in, you won't. Okay, okay. It takes no size or strength at all to handle a motorcycle like you see this little bitty girl doing right here. All it takes is technique, three techniques, head and eyes, the friction zone, a little pressure on the rear brake, that's all there is to it. It takes just a few hours to learn these techniques after which you get better and better. And you keep practicing the techniques and you can do what this tiny little woman is doing on a 950 pound motorcycle. 
I realize you don't have to do this out on the street, but having the ability to do this will change your riding life forever. It's so much more enjoyable to ride a motorcycle when you actually know what the hell you're doing. A uh, Suzuki V-Strom, Goldwing, you name it. The techniques work for every motorcycle. And I'm going to go over the mistakes you're likely to make in the same situation. Now, this is the first exercise. It's the slow cone weave, and it goes into a huge turning area. You might call it a circle or a U-turn, probably about 35 feet. Watch this rider. He's missing the green cone to his right. I tell the riders to focus on that cone. He misses it by 10 feet. But because we have so much extra room for error, he's still able to make it. And this despite the fact that he kept the bike as upright as possible. That is a very common mistake. It's extremely important. You've got to turn your head and look where you want to go. And you got to allow the motorcycle to lean. Watch this rider. He's afraid to turn his head. He's afraid to lean the motorcycle. He looks straight. And of course, he can't complete the exercise. That's extremely common. Fighting the lean of the motorcycle. But the bike turns by leaning. If you don't allow the motorcycle to lean, you can't make the turns. Okay, if you've watched any of my 1200 or so videos I've got on YouTube or even better my ride like a pro video or surviving the mean streets video you know that I stress three techniques and I always say the most important of the three techniques is the proper use of your head and eyes wherever you turn your head and eyes that's where the motorcycle will go at low speeds we want to master the friction zone and also the proper use of the rear brake but the most important technique is the proper use of your head and eyes because you're going to use this at all speeds and especially you better be able to use it at high speeds. Now the most common motorcycle crash that involves just the rider is called failure to negotiate a curve. Rider gets into the turn, may think he's going too fast, straightens up the bike and runs right off the curve and that happens because the rider doesn't know where to look how to use his head and eyes for instance here I turn my head and eyes and I try to look through the curve I position myself in a spot that will give me the best view around the curve 